dollar and you put money in big corporations pockets that's really good and basically it just goes back to what you were talking about mr calendar the desensitization of children to violence and the consequences through media mm -hmm. through rap music mm -hmm. through video games mm -hmm. so they're actually taught how to be criminal mm -hmm. and there's a there's a debate that's uh, that i think has been raging for a long time mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd like to see if we could settle it right now a lot of people say well it's just entertainment eh. it's just it's just for fun it's just pretend it doesn't matter if you call it education it doesn't matter if you call it entertainment it doesn't matter if you call it environment if it if it goes in your brain if it goes through your eyes and your ears if it's sensory input and it hits your brain uh it reaches the subconscious and it deposits in the subconscious like a seed mm -hmm. it becomes a crop and then you harvest that crop now and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you call it if you see gunshots i used to live near uh Beatty's ford and Roselle ferry mm -hmm. i heard more gunshots in that neighborhood than when i lived in los angeles those gunshots you feel something when you hear those shots now when you're watching a uh, uh, mission impossible when you're watching some tv show when you're playing that video game you don't get that same feeling mm -hmm. you don't understand until you're in it that this is really a serious thing so these youth jump feet first into a situation that they've been completely desensitized to now i want to just interject because you said you grew up dad would do to you if you made that choice um there's there's, there's an even deeper level than that because well, our, our brains talking to the mic. yeah our brains mm -hmm. the, the brains of the youth that were born in the 80s i was born in the 70s right aren't even they aren't even the same kind of brains the, the brains of that older generation more attuned to reading mm -hmm. right more attuned yeah. to looking at text uh, these newer children literally are used to video they're used to video games. They're used to the flashing lights, the quick images, the bright colors. They're used to sitting in front of a screen. They're used to absorbing violent, misogynistic, negative imagery for hours upon hours. And yet a choice is a choice, but it's kind of like an ink in a drop of water. It's kind of like once that, once that drop, uh, I'm sorry, once that drop of ink goes in that glass of water, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, tainted. The, the choice is tainted. Mm -hmm. That's, well, that's, a, that's really good. You know, <laughs> write that down, Miss T. <laughs> And then just, you need to write that down. That's good. And then just as far as as, as far as being a man is concerned, mm -hmm. we talked about the political and the institutional oppression. But like as a man, when you're a young man, when you're a boy becoming a man, mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure to have it together, be cool, don't be weak, uh, uh, only express your emotions if it's going to be in an attractive way. Um, society on purpose does not teach men to express their emotions in a functional way right. mm -hmm. um, because that keeps men and women fighting against each other right. and as long as men and women are fighting amongst each other with things like sexism patriarchy misogyny as long as we fight amongst each other we're not turning on the 30 people in this country who have uh, a worth that equals the bottom 150 million people in this country so there's there's so many levels to the way we're being hustled and uh and, and that's one of them a negative mm -hmm. environment to produce negative behavior is one mm -hmm. of them. It's a, it's a hustle. Somebody's trying to distract us mm -hmm. from the 30 people who have a worth equal to 150 million people. In this and country. that's why I say, how can you live in this world? time to worry about that he just need a beating i was gonna say that's what Ooh, he, he just need a beating and why would you be a single mom why are so many women single moms where's that first so, oh, but it but it loops right back into the subject go ahead of this prison industrial complex it, lo it loops right back into that subject um i think it's interesting you know we can address perception uh, white and black drug use is just about equal in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, the New York Times in 2013 said that blacks are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana use. Uh, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration report said that 20% uh, of 20% of whites will use cocaine. 10% mm -hmm. of blacks and Latinos will try cocaine. Mm -hmm. But blacks and Latinos combined make up 75% of the prison population. What about the difference between being caught with crack, which is a typically yeah. in a, it's the same drug, but it's mm -hmm. in a different form right. versus cocaine, right. which most white people pure use. Form. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But the, the charges for getting caught with crack 
-hmm. is like worse. I right. can't remember the statistics and, behind and, it. And just recently, the Obama administration addressed that. Right. Uh, Eric Holder addressed that and is starting to reduce the disparity. A lot of mm -hmm. people think Obama doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. If you think Obama hasn't oh. done anything, look into what oh, that he man has does. Done a He's lot. actually on the job yeah. to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I appreciate him doing that. Okay, well, wonderful. We have a caller on the line. She Thank said you true. so much. There's an even larger level to it because the, uh, the, the public education system uh, hasn't been weakened just to hurt black people. It's actually been weakened to hurt all people. How does a corporation benefit from having an educated employee when they can have somebody who's less educated pay you as little as possible, work you as hard as possible, and then squeeze you for all your worth and hand that over to shareholders? Right. That's why they fought Obamacare so hard, because mm -hmm. there's so many more people who can now leave working for somebody else and start their own business. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. That's really good, Mr. Callender. I, I like that. And I want to say thank you to the caller who called in earlier. Mm -hmm. And tonight. This is the reason why they twerking on stage because they had to do the same thing. You know, how do you balance? I mean, mm -hmm. we talk about balance. What about the, uh, <laughs> what about, what is it called? The, uh, the Madonna whore complex. Okay. Oh. Let's explain that. You know, where socially mm -hmm. women are placed under so much pressure mm -hmm. that they're either going to be viewed through this lens of, uh, of the perfect virgin or the perfect church going woman. Or they're kind of like this Beyonce representation, super wow. sexy, super hip. They're under this pressure to be both at the same, same time, time, all the time. I guess from the age of 12, as soon as puberty kicks in, boom, you're under two impossible expectations 24-7. And if you don't live up to either, there's always somebody waiting there to criticize you. And it's mm. like, you know, so, so men are placed under one ridiculous standard. Women are placed under another ridiculous standard. Then somehow we're supposed to have functional relationships and that's society. Yeah. And there's somebody behind all of that who's making a dollar off of, <laughs> off of everything. <laughs> off the makeup, off the $120 sneakers that cost $5 to make that they paid somebody $2 a day to make. It's just levels of hustles mm -hmm. that we're being approached with. Wow, that's really, really good. I want you guys to stay tuned. Tonight you're listening to a special edition of Living Life on Purpose. My parents, uh, my parents did me a huge favor when I was young. They had me in museums. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They didn't really. I didn't really. I don't think I really saw real television until I was like six or seven. Mm -hmm. I think I saw like PBS, one other channel. Oh yeah. I didn't oh, really please. see until I was five. Zoom and that was, all you of know, that. I mean, I'll make a revolutionary suggestion to everybody listening. Okay. You know, revolutionary. I love uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the TV. I just get rid good. of it. Mm -hmm. Just get rid of it. It's not your friend. It's not there to do you a favor. You think you're watching a half hour show. You're really watching 20 minutes of commercials. Just yeah. get rid of it. Mm -hmm. like, you know, if, you, if you've got a youngin, their brain is still developing. If their brain develops alongside that television, they're not going to be oriented toward text. They're not going to want to read. Just get rid of that thing. It's not there for you. It's not your friend. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's, I think, I mean, if you're a parent, you're competing against every billboard, every radio station, every television station, every video game. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that is yeah, so that's good. That's good. <laughs> wow. That's really good. I remember for like three years, we didn't have cable. with all that they're exposed to right. nowadays right mm -hmm. what are you feeling what are you thinking and just talking about the male perspective i think it's really important try to influence youth try to craft um a vision of the male identity as somebody who's a gentleman somebody who's peaceful somebody who does not get caught up in their emotions somebody who does not get caught up in the moment somebody who does not have to to validate their behavior around other males by doing what everybody else is doing. Somebody who's smart enough to be suspicious when they see everybody else doing something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, wow. yeah. Talking about from the male perspective, I think it's really important. You got when these young kids are growing up, that testosterone is rising. Yeah. You know that animal nature to establish dominance, uh, to find somebody to mate with. 
all of that, you have to see those levels ahead of time and try to push all that energy in a direction where you get a poet, where you get a Pablo Neruda, mm -hmm. you know, where you get a James Baldwin, where Absolutely. you get a Martin Luther King, not not a Rick Ross. Right. And like not my a son, Chief Keith. Yeah, let me just tell you this. My son got an opportunity. Right. And, and I have a question for you, mm -hmm. for you, uh, Mr. Calendar. What what made you go on the path that you're on? Because obviously you're not just a baby daddy and I'm not saying that you have children, but mm -hmm. you're a great <clears throat> catch. What catapulted you to be on the road that you're on? Uh, I'm a reflection of my family, primarily. Primarily, they're both my parents are educators. They're both really classy. They're both... Uh, They've both been a big presence in the community. And they just, like I said, they, they brought me to museums. They had me in organizations that were positive, that were about being something. Um, they exposed me, they exposed me to other, they, they educated me better than my school ever did or ever even wanted to. So it's and, not the school's responsibility. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just they have no incentive to do you a favor. Mm. They're trying to produce worker bees. They're not trying to produce great minds. Wow. So, you know, all I, I guess all I have to say is just as far as men are concerned, just do whatever you can to make being a gentleman cool, to be mm -hmm. to being a thinker cool, to right. be in a positive, peaceful, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Buddha, Jesus type presence cool. Yeah. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's what we need. That's what wow. we need badly, because if you don't channel that energy. When that testosterone and that competition and that adrenaline starts to jump, it's going to go in a bad direction and there's going to be somebody waiting there just licking their chops, hoping to put your child in a box. Was yeah. there ever a time when you wanted to bear off? I mean, I'm, I mean, I've always been hard headed, but at the same time, <laughs> right, let's not get it twisted. Right, right. No, but at the same time, I always knew that there was a much bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I always knew that there was a much bigger picture. So and you I made a what? You made a what? Uh oh, she wants What did to you make? Oh yes, yes, a choice. Most okay. definitely. Exactly. Because you were, you you wasn't. But, but I realized I, they taught me not to be a fish in water. I was scared. So I wasn't getting caught up in the moment. Mm -hmm. I was scared. And say. they taught me to respect women. But right. there was something that shaped you making that choice, though. It was them. I'm completely a reflection of my family. I do believe your parents were allowing you to twerk and glorifying that and putting you in certain situations. I mean, my, yeah, my, par my parents were letting me go out to different parties when I was very young. But by the time they let me go, they already knew. They already you put that in there. They didn't still. Yeah. They didn't still. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said hard headed, but that's not really a bad thing. No. No, that's just like kind of thinking outside the box, being a, a you know. No, 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 hard headed. Okay, hard -headed. never mind. Specific. I was trying to. Specifically. <laughs> but still. Mm hmm. But still. What was your, what was your, um, what was your, um, choice, Lala? We just.